The postman can be seen collecting and delivering letters on all three days whilst the moon hovers above, but he's a tad conflicted and emotional. On day one, past his delivery hours, you can find him practicing perfectly counting to ten. Now, postman is part of the Anjun Cafe quest, where he delivers a letter to Cafe, which is odd how he knows where his hideout is, but regardless. Now, if he gets this mail to deliver, you'll find him practicing his game again on night two. But if there was no mail, he gets depressed and locks himself inside with no way to get in. We get another clue into his troubles when we find out he actually mails a letter on day three to himself and then collects it. We can find this letter on his bed and it says, to myself, you've been doing a great job delivering mail. I have a request for my hardworking self. All the townsfolk have taken refuge. I want myself to flee too. Even if it's not written in the schedule, I want myself to flee. Please. From me, Postman. Unless you give him the special delivery mail to give to Madame Aroma, who tells him to flee, Postman stands his post, waiting for mail as the moon crashes down. You can find a lotto shop in West Clocktown where you can buy a ticket for 10 rupees in the morning. And come night, you can see if you have the winning numbers for a cool 50 rupees. Of course, with the Song of Time, you can learn the winning numbers, go back in time, and always win. Now, we never see the lotto attendant, but with a cheeky little trick, we can see that there is a hidden spooky mask inside, where you would expect to find the attendant. Now, when you look inside, the mask will actually turn to look at you. Why did they program this? Look, its head turns depending on which side I look look at it. Creepy. Another neat detail is that if you look at the money pouring out of the winnings up top, you'll see three reds, three blues, and two greens. If you add those up, you get 77 rupees, which seven is a number associated with luck, not just in Japan, but all over the world. Who's feeling lucky? The mayor and his wife run the city of Clocktown, and they all have a unique connection to coffee. It starts with Mayor Dotor, whose name refers to a popular coffee shop in Japan. The mayor's wife is named Madame Aroma. Of course, of coffee's most distinctive features, its aroma is second to none. Then we move to her son, Cafe, which is just a misspelling of the word cafe. In addition to these, Madame Aroma herself has a milk bar she calls latte, which of course is a very popular coffee drink. Madame Aroma stocks her bar with Chateau Romani milk from Romani's Ranch, delivered and owned by Cremia. Now the name Cremia has the word cream derived from it, which is appropriate as her job revolves around dairy products. She secretly has a crush on Cafe, which is unfortunate because he is set to marry Anju. In his diary, Cafe refers to Anju as a sweetheart, and everyone in town recognizes just how sweet and good-hearted she really is. It appears in the end, Cafe prefers sugar instead of cream. On day one, we can read Granny's journal, which mentions just how horrible her granddaughter's cooking is. It even mentions a plan on how she's going to avoid eating that day. Around noon, we can spot Anju with chopsticks mixing up some sort of food here. When Anju delivers the food, Granny says she's already been fed and even calls her tortoise, which was Anju's father. It appears that Granny has been faking her senioritis by calling everyone, including us, tortoise. And this is how she gets out of eating food, by saying that she's already eaten it. But I mean, how bad could it be really? Anju walks away to after Granny says, phew, and nearly gives up the plot. On the topic of tortoise, this is just a misspelling of the word tortoise. And unlike turtles, tortoises are land-based, kind of like Koopas in Mario. If we pop into 3DS version, Granny has her wall adorned with all sorts of photos, including one here of this man. Now, it's hard to say whether or not this was Grampy or tortoise, but the photo does resemble Mario with that big old schnoz. And if it was tortoise, then it's a fun connection to a sister franchise. Takuri comes from the Japanese word to snatch, which is appropriate as this bird steals from anything it sees, but mostly just us, and I hate it. Whenever this bird comes at you, it will attempt to steal something. Typically around three to four items pop out from your inventory, including rupees, arrows, and bombs. Interestingly, if we have a low amount of rupees, it actually won't trigger them to spawn from us. Now lesser items aside, it can also steal some larger stuff like our sword or bottle. And yes, that does include the fairy sword. It doesn't matter if we have it equipped or not, the bird will randomly go for our greater items. If it steals it, it will carry it off to the curiosity shop, but there is a way to avoid some of this. If our bottles are occupying something, then it can't steal them. And if our sword is at the smithy, or if we take the form of Deku Goron or Zora, then it can't steal our sword either. If you do get mugged by this enemy, but then manage to kill it, it will drop a fat orange rupee worth 200 plus all the items it stole from you. So that's at least nice. Still hate this bird.
Cafe infamously wears the Keaton mask, which was given to him by his friend at the Curiosity Shop when they were children. If we wear the mask, we get the opportunity to speak to a fox spirit called a Keaton, which is based off the Japanese spiritual fox, Kitsune. And it typically likes to play tricks, but it's also a good omen of friendship and love. There are four spots we can find rustling grass to summon this fox. One in North Clocktown, one in Mountain Village, one on Milk Road, and the last one is only accessible in the prologue. This fox has three tails, which is rather rare for a Kitsune. They usually have one, five, seven, or nine tails. Over its lifetime, the Kitsune will earn more and more tails until it becomes a legendary nine-tail fox. Our fox has 30 random questions that truly test your MM knowledge. If you get five right, then you earn yourself a piece of heart. Notice all the odd numbers. One Keaton mask, three places to find the fox, each with three tails for a total of nine tails, five questions and asks, and you're most likely gonna get this quiz wrong seven times in a row. Tingo left-handed, right-handed, but what? If you take a stroll down the beach of Great Bay, you'll notice some birds flying around the Zora Macau as he floats in the water. Due to his injuries, he can't swim and doesn't move. Or does he? On day one, we can clearly see that he's here. But come day two, we can see that the tide pushes him out yonder. And on day three, the tide moves him yet again to be closer to the platform. Poor guy has been out here for ages. But there's another oddity to cover while we're here. In the US version, there is a convenient grab button displayed over our A slot. It allows Link to lock onto the Zora more easily to push him to shore, despite this odd camera angle. In the Japanese version, they didn't have that. In fact, you just had to jam your body against Zora and hope you kinda aimed him towards the shore. Thank you for this quality of life improvement. Baby! Something's odd about this picture. With the help of the Mask of Truth, we can learn from the Gossip Stones that the Redeads that reside within Iconic Castle will dance whenever you wear one of these three masks. This is further corroborated by defeating a Garo who tells us that these Redeads used to be the Castle Dancing Troop. And it totally checks out. The Gibdo Mask, which relates to the Ikana Mummified Residence, works. The Captain's Hat, which relates to the Army of Ikana, also works. But why does the Garo Mask work? The local researcher tells us that the Garos were enemy spies sent to Ikana, and now they're nothing more than the shells of their former selves, continuing to spy after death. If they were indeed enemy spies, why do the dancing troop dance for the Garos, their enemies? Hmm, I'll be honest, aside from theories, I'm not too sure, so I'll ask you, why do you think they dance? The Song of Time is used to revert time to the beginning of Majora's Mask's three-day cycle. When you do this, you will typically retain all your main quest items, masks, and items. You'll lose things like your bombs and arrow ammo, but you'll still retain the quiver and bomb bag. So the Song of Time saves all your main items, but there are a few exceptions. The quest trade items are one. They disappear and you'll have to get them again each time. And there is also just one mask that doesn't get saved with the song either. I know, weird, right? What on earth can the Song of Time not save? Well. Shockingly, it's the Fierce Deity Mask. For whatever reason, if you play the Song of Time right after you get this mask, you'll lose it. Which is odd because this goes against everything the game has taught you so far. In fact, to keep the Fierce Deity Mask, you have to beat Majora and go through the credits. At some point during these credits, the game secretly saves, but doesn't tell you. I guess when you boot it up again, it's technically a post game. Hmm, weird. I can't be the only one that lost it this way, right? Right? The ending credits of most games tend to be rolling names on a black screen, but not here. Depending on what mask you've obtained, you'll see a secret ending for nine unique masks. Above, you'll see the secret scene with the counterpart below. It starts off with the postman finally running free in the fields. Then we see the Rosa sisters showing off their new moves on stage. Next, we see the five wholly united great fairies. And after that, we see Creamia cheering on Romani as she nails her archery training. The old lady from the bomb shop with her son come after, just hanging out. Afterwards, we see Grog surrounded by his little chicken friends. We then see a packed milk bar, with Gorman finally fulfilling his dream of show business. And in that same bar, we can see the troop leader leading everyone in song and dance. And finally, we see the couple's mask where we only see Anju in her wedding dress. Wait, where's Cafe? 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 What if we could get rid of Tattle? What might happen? When we start up MM, Link is on a journey to find his fairy companion, Navi, so he has no fairy at this point. In OOT and MM, the fairy is the thing which allows Link to target and analyze certain things, but in the Ganondorf scene, we infamously lose Navi and are no longer able to target. So when we boot up Majora's Mask, is this still the case? Well, Link starts with no fairy companion, and in this cutscene here, that is where you acquire Tattle. So it's the vital part of the game which hands us our partner. If we could skip this cutscene, we never get Tattle and then some funny quirks 
works begin. Cutscenes will sometimes show Tattle's dialogue even though she is clearly gone. You can't get her up by pressing A either, but Link can still actually target enemies and the like. You can still see Tattle's icon appear in the up C button even though she doesn't fly out. Thing is, if you hit C up, nothing happens. No feisty dialogue from her. And it kind of feels like a modern Zelda game in that way, kind of like Tears of the Kingdom. Would you get rid of Tattle? Happy Spooktober! Today, we're talking about the secrets of Gibdos. Unlike Redeads, Gibdos can talk to you if you wear the Gibdo mask. Normally, it's not possible to have this mask before you save Pamela and her father, but if you do have it, you can speak to these undead circling the house and they say, those inside, our friends, bring them. It seems that they want to join in on the jolly undead activities. How sweet. Now, there's plenty of quirks with these guys. For instance, did you know that Gibdos might be blind or at least speed sensitive? If you stand perfectly still, they won't bother you and will just pass by. In fact, you can walk slowly as well and they don't seem to mind. It's only when you start to run do they react and grab you. In fact, you can wear the Bremen mask and march so slow that you can play it loudly and they don't mind at all. They only seem to react to speed. And this is where it gets crazy. If you equip the bunny hood, even standing still, the Gibdos will go nuts and even turn around and attack you. It seems that they really hate this mask. I wonder why. The great skeleton leader, Egos Duikana, and his minions guard the undead throne room in the castle, and they have some pretty neat quirks. If you equip the Bremen Mask, which is notable for being the mask coveted by the troop leader for being able to lead others in a rhythmic march, then the minions will begin marching with you, and their timing's pretty spot on. Too bad you can't take advantage of it, because as soon as you stop marching, they attack you. But it doesn't end there. Once you defeat the minions, if you're wearing the captain's hat, then Egos begins to speak with you as if you were Captain Kida, the leader of the undead army. After some funny dialogue passes, he realizes you aren't who you claim and the fight begins. Awesome. In the iconic castle throne room, Link has to shoot fire arrows at the windows to let light in. And depending on what time of day it is, the light moves around the room. Cool, but is the sunlight accurate? Well, in Majora's Mask, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. However, in Ikana, we can't see the sun. It's kind of smoggy or something. But we do know that the moon always faces south towards the swamp. So we can orient ourselves and see that the moon is facing down there, which means that that is north. Keeping north angled, we can determine that the throne room faces east and that these windows here are probably the ones that Link shoots through. So how does the light move? Well, it turns in a clockwise motion. So at, at sunset, it looks like the sun might be in the east. Well, that's not right. Anyway, how is there sunlight at night anyway? Maybe this is just some sort of Ikana sun magic. Spooky. There's more to cover on these spookily wrapped boys. We covered that merely walking slowly allows you to pass by undetected. And this works for our transformation masks too. In fact, while as Goron, they can't seem to grab you at all. You're probably too big. This also applies to Deku. No undead hugs for him. But don't worry, Zora is the perfect size and he easily gets snatched. Now, Gibdos also react to Link pulling out certain items like the sword, bow, or even bottle threatening, right? Now, mind you, you can have these items out and walk by them. You just can't pull them out. This also works in reverse. Putting any of these items away also triggers the rage of the Gibdos. Heck, even putting your fins away as Zora ticks them off. Man, I thought these guys were Gib bros. This one is heartbreaking. There's a milk bar called Latte, and while they don't show alcohol, we can see Gorman getting inebriated. The milk may have alcoholic properties, and in fact may be kumis, a type of fermented dairy. If we defend the farm from both aliens and raiders, then on the final day, we can see Krima and Romani in the barn. By now, Krima realizes the moon's crashing, and there isn't anywhere safe, not even here. But Romani doesn't know. She tells Romani that tonight she gets to try the Chateau Romani for her first time, the most prized drink at the milk bar. Romani looks pleased. She finally gets to try it. She asks if she can get a mask too, a Romani mask, a symbol of being an adult. And Creamia says yes, she'll make her one. And that tonight, after they enjoy their drinks, that she should sleep in Creamia's bed tonight. Romani seems happy, but also a tad confused. Why does she get a mask, drink, and cuddles tonight of all nights? It's bittersweet. Maybe you've never noticed. Maybe you were too busy rushing against time, the little you've left. But just to stop and wait, you'll notice something unique. In a game where the clock is ticking and you're fighting against time, it's interesting that should Link stand perfectly still, after an hour and a half in the game, the camera starts moving in on you, zooming in on Link. 
The camera continues to zoom in for the next several hours. It's ominous. It's almost as if we ourselves are the moon crashing into you. Inevitable. Gibdos have an interesting quirk that if you burn them with fire arrows, they'll actually turn into redeads. Typically, you would only mummify high-ranking members of society like a royal or a lord, so it's cool to see that burning away their bandages reveals the same corpse beneath. Once burned, the redeads by the music house will no longer have anything to say, but would act as Gibdos would. The Gibdos in the well, however, will still talk to you once they're redeads and even accept items for trade. A neat detail is that Tettle will notice the difference and provide different info on each form. Finally, before I mentioned that the bunny hood makes them hostile, Sorry, this is incorrect. Apparently, equipping or unequipping any mask, similar to taking out or putting away gear, is what makes them hostile. In fact, they don't even mind being attacked by weapons that don't do damage. Maybe they like it. Here's an arrow for your troubles. Trick or treat. This one perplexes me. Shiro the guard can be found in the entrance valley to Ikana, right by the graveyard. In order to see him, you need the Lens of Truth, which is used primarily to find hidden passages or see the spirits of the dead. In fact, you can freely pass through him when not using the Lens. When we do use it, we can speak with Shiro, who asks for medicine. You can give him either a red potion or even a blue potion. Either will help him stand out. And afterwards, he can be seen without the Lens. But something is going on here. First off, why and how is Shiro here, in the Land of the Dead? He mentions that he has been here for years and no one has helped or noticed him. Years? How is that possible? After giving him the medicine, he says he thinks he feels better. Is Shiro actually dead? A spirit lingering to life just waiting for a way to stand out? But our medicine doesn't bring those back from the dead. Surely he must have passed ages ago. Perhaps now with this medicine, his spirit has formed a physical corpse. Spooky. The 100th Secret Nodity is one of my favorites. In Ikana, we can visit a ghost house where we can challenge four ghosts to a fight. These ghosts are known as the Poe Sisters. The ghost handler says that we have to defeat these four in order to help soothe their regrets that linger from their time alive. Tattle can help identify them, and it's peculiar that they actually have names. Tattle will tell us that they were called Amy, Beth, Joe, and Meg. Hmm. If these names sound familiar, you'd be right. Our literary viewers might have noticed that these are the names of the four ladies in the novel Little Women, which was also turned into a film. In fact, the description even says that Amy is the youngest, which matches up with the story that takes place in the mid 19th century. What regrets do they have that force their ghostly souls to remain? Huh, now that's an oddity. Hey everybody, I just wanna say, Thank you so much for joining me on this wild ride. Everyone, we did it. We made it to 100. And while we will take a small break, we will be back with more Majora's Mask Secrets and Oddities. I hope you enjoy the other content I have in the meantime, so sit tight. Until next time.